Hey, hello! If you like what you see and want to see more, it would encourage me if you liked, subscribed or commented. Or all three of them if you feel generous. If you prefer reading, I wrote a guide with all the information I will talk about here that I left in the description below. With that being said, I hope you enjoy and learn something new. Hello there! I want to start off by clarifying what my goal is with this guide. My goal is to give you a basic understanding of shot calling, as well as show you how to improve your shot calling. An introduction guide, basically. Why should you follow my guide? Well, there are few guides in Albion, and even fewer for shot calling specifically. Most shot callers have had to learn directly from other callers, or have had to figure it out on their own through trial and error. They say the best ability is availability. At least, this guide has that going for it. Credibility. If you're skeptical about my credibility, which I completely understand, I just want to share the points why you should and shouldn't trust me and you can decide for yourself. Before I boast about myself, I want to quickly add here that I showed this guide to the following people and they have reviewed, commented or helped improve this guide. Michael, Nuxrub, Yoyo, Domnit, Syndic and Momomo. The first shot caller that I interacted with was Al Fox, during my time with NIMBY. In my opinion, he was a very solid shot caller. Definitely above average, but at the time had a badly trained Zerg. I was overall inexperienced. After Al Fox and his guild left the Alliance, he left a sort of guide to shot calling. It was more or less some key points for shot calling. After that, I started actually shot calling. In only my second ZVZ as primary shot caller, I had to lead an attack on a Terry which I of course failed. After that I had a lot of practice, which was mostly castles and general open world conflicts. Next, the call to arms update hit, and the Limhurs Discord server was launched. I was the third lead shot caller in that Discord. Eventually I became a moderator where my role was managing shot caller applications and coaching shot callers. Fast forward a bit, I am now in Wrath of Dawn, the Nomad Alliance, where the ZVZs are taken a bit more seriously. So, if we look at myself objectively, I have shot called before, I have coached before, I am a, I was a shot caller in the Limhurst Discord, I has, haven't been in any major ZVZ focused guild like PoE or Surf or something similar, I don't have a lot of high level ZVZ experience, and I'm kinda dumb. I also forgot to add that I was present at a coaching session of Momono, in my opinion the best shot caller in this game th this game has known at the moment, when he gave feedback on Alfox, which taught me a lot. Momono has also brought to m the following to my attention. When you start shot calling, you are viewed as a nobody. In case you are trying to shot call for a lot of veterans, they might not deem you worthy to even see what you have to offer. You will have to prove yourself, and that might give you tons of stress. Personally, I think if you try it and enjoy it, you should keep practicing and trying until you're there, regardless of what people think about you. First of all, ZVZ introduction. If you want to start shot calling, you need prior experience in ZVZ, Black Zone or Faction Flight. You should have a basic understanding of every role and item that is used in ZVZ. If you do not know them, I made an introduction guide about ZVZs. You can find the link in the description below. Shot caller's job. Your job as a shot caller consists of two big parts. The first is achieving your goal, and the second is instructing or informing your Zerg. The goal is dependent on you and your leader. Your goal should determine how you approach the fight. If your goal is to win the objective, sometimes the call is to make the enemy impatient or to deny it contact. The latter which I do not support. If your goal is fun, you want to have a fight that is as long as possible, and should use the objective as bait or motivation for the enemies. I feel like playing around objectives or thinking about them while you're starting out shotgun shouldn't be one of your main concerns. The objective of the ZVZ is second priority if you're learning to sh a shot call. Quote from Syndic While getting experience in the actual fight is valuable, this also teaches some very bad habits that are sometimes hard to get rid of down the road when the gear bills need to be paid. End quote. Instructing and informing your Zerg is the number one priority. You can have an excellent strategy, but in the moment decision making will make that strategy work. In other words, tactics is bigger than strategy. Mamo had a very unique way of explaining the job of a shot caller. He said, you need to spoon feed your Zerg information. 
think this is a beautiful expression for what you need to say. You're the eyes of your Zerg, you're the mind of the Zerg. I will elaborate on calls and important topics surrounding this later on in the video. If you prog progress as a shot caller, there will be a point where you feel like the people depend and need you. That might be true, but remember that this is a game and there is nothing wrong with taking a break or not showing up for some time. I think shot callers, officers and leaders of guilds are mostly mentally fatigued people in this game. Respect yourself. The Zerg's job. Your Zerg's job is to follow your commands, not waste your abilities and survive. However, for an experienced Zerg, your calls are mere suggestions. What I mean with that is that a veteran's EVZ player will know where to hit, where to retreat and even know if the engage is worth committing. You might think this is a bad thing. But the good thing about this is that they won't die as easily and will get, uh, hit good comps in many cases. Thus they see threats they cannot surpass like a Grilsig. A good Zerg is not selfish and will try to help his or her allies as much as possible by doing his job. One of the major flaws of Zergs is that they are like moths to a flame. The moment they see that shiny little yellow bag on top of the white skeleton, they suddenly have the urge to click it. Veterans will again know when to loot and how long to loot. In my opinion, if you're just fighting for fun, you should not loot until the fight is over. In case you're fighting for any kind of objective or trying to min-max, you should at max spend 1-2 to two seconds looting. I personally really do not recommend looting, but I do understand the appeal and in some cases you should just loot and get out. Of course, take note of your alliance and guild rules and guidelines and follow those. Some guilds have specialized combat looters, or only officers can loot or something else of the other lines. Next up I want to talk about the key values. Number 1. Observing forces, battleground and minimap, aka macro. I did say earlier you should not focus on objectives, but what I mean here is the actual terrain you're going to fight on. A general rule of thumb is to always have a way to kite in case you have to. If you have the advantage of choosing where to fight, you would all would choose an open area, if you're outnumbering, and an open area close by a choke in case you're outnumbered. Try to think about how easy it is to flank, from both your enemy and your POV, and how easy it is to reposition or leave the zone. These two, last two things are luxuries, but nice to have, of course. Uh, 1A. Be the eyes. You should be the eyes of your Zerg. You tell them where the enemy is, where they need to hit the enemy, or they need to be careful. Remember, if you're seeing important stuff or want them to do something, and you're not giving them enough info, they will be hesitant or will make more mistakes. Like MOBAs, you need good map awareness. Pay attention to your minimap, the blob movements, and so on. Sometimes blobs appear and you will not notice it because you're tunnel visioning the enemies directly on your screen. It might be helpful to assign people that will look out and speak up when they've noticed big changes like flanks, blobs or so on. But don't rely on them, see them as a plan B in case you fail to notice. Point 2. Using the information you have. Try to read the battle before it starts. What is your win condition? What is theirs? What are your personal strengths and weaknesses? What are your Zerg's strengths and weaknesses? What position are the enemy taking? Try to analyze the movements of the blobs on the map. Have scouts at access to know if they have allies. I know that you need to be decisive, but I tend to take a breather when you are doing the Mexican standoff repositioning minigame to prevent rushed decisions. Dominant re recommends to assign uh, battle scouts, whose primary role is to look out for good angles to engage from and calling out flanks while being mounted. Point 3. Decisiveness and confidence. Decisiveness is important, but also hard because little bits of vital information can change rapidly. To make sure your words are clear, you should articulate as much as possible. Change your words or intonation if you change uh, an important part of your instruction. For example, en engage north in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go north, go north, go north. Go south now, go south, south, get out, go south. I'll go more in depth on how to make uh, clear instructions later on. Confidence is important, but overconfidence is dangerous. You need to mind trick yourself that you are the best shot caller this game has ever seen. You are the key to victory. If you're confident, you will act confident and your Zerg will feel more confident. If everyone feels good, you have a higher chance of succeeding. If you don't believe me, try to think the opposite. Let's say you're mega uncertain, your Zerg will doubt you. They will not engage if they deem it a bad engage. They might not go as deep as they should uh, in the engage. They might bail even. 
point three A. Accepting defeat. It is better to retreat and save a part of your zerg than to int all of your zerg. When it's accepting defeat, many shot callers kind of break down and start flaming whoever they think is responsible. In 95% of the cases, they blame their zerg. Be it the tanks being too slow or DPS not going deep enough or healers not healing the front. In a moment, hold your flame. You should get the people out that are still alive and set up a plan B. In many cases, that means read gear. Take a breather and analyze what exactly went wrong. Feel free to ask your zerg, why didn't you guys hit their backline when I asked? Was there a grail seeker? In many cases, people will get stopped by the enemy and then the blame is no longer the DPS, but the supports instead. Find the root of the problem, even if that problem is you, instead of flaming the symptom. Point 4. Acting confident, being vocally confident. If you feel insecure or not confident, act like you are uh, act like it like until you are. Fake it until you make it. I swear this isn't a troll, like I've done this many times. The reason I mention this again is because you might be confident but it is possible your zerg doesn't view you that way. Make sure your zerg trusts you. Number 5. Timing engages or cooldowns. When playing, try to play a weapon that approximately matches your DPS cooling of their E. In many cases this is 30 seconds with a poor comment. I personally recommend the Soul Scythe, but more on that later. If you play Locus or something else as shot caller, either wait until your cooldown is done, can be dangerous, or ask one of your cannons or DPS to give a heads up of their E cooldown. They would say 10 seconds or I got E. Also try to keep track of how long it is ago that the enemy engaged. If they just engaged or engaged 10 seconds ago, you have a window of opportunity. However, be careful because this window can be a bit. Two part engage is very popular and will bait your engage. The counter is stronger than the initiator if done well. More on that later. Point 6. Maintaining morale. Losing is inevitable. To take a loss and strike after it's powerful. When losing, try to point out some good stuff or brush it off with humor. Many times I saw clubs of people getting absolutely stomped and then laughing saying, mass more. This is one of the best ways to maintain morale. Don't of course say exactly what I gave in my example, but I hope you get what I'm trying to say. I think that you should point the positives out as much as possible, but don't point them out if you wiped entirely first engaged, then you won't be sincere. Quote from Domnet. Don't give up as, shot, uh, as a shot caller after wiping. I almost quit shot calling after inting my first faction zerg when I started playing the game. I felt so embarrassed, but then I realized it's part of the game to wipe." End quote. A good way to show how well you did is battleboards. Humans love numbers, and if the numbers are in your favor, you get dopamine. I don't actually know if this is true, but it probably is in some way, you get the point. Keep in mind that you can easily twist the view of your zerg to make it look like you won. There is a funny graph that shows us that uh, is now on the screen. Point 7. Giving reference points. When calling, use reference points as much as possible. Reference points are points that will make it easier for your zerg to locate you or the place you want them. Examples. Follow the road, go north. Engage up the hill east. Hold here, we are holding west of the Everode. Use everything you got, but try to not get too obnoxious. With obnoxious, I mean come to the southwest of the hill west of the east Everod. Keep it simple. Come west of the blue Everod. This is the most important part uh, for me, says a, mo a Mamona of this, about uh, giving reference points. On top of your vocal calls, constantly ping your location on the map. Default key is P, I recommend rebinding it to T so that your guild members can see where you are at all times. If you're in a big alliance, spread your guild members among the parties so they can mimic pings to your allies. Point 8. Observing your own zerg. After a few engages or after a loss, you need to determine if your zerg is or was doing what you want or wanted them to do. You can give short objective and neutral feedback to your um, zerg, but think about morale. If you flame them, you might demotivate them. Quote from Domnet. After a few engages, check if you are outtrading your enemy zerg. If they are getting much more kills than you are very every time you engage or counter, you will lose the fight in the long run. Instead, pause and think about what you can change so that you don't do not keep repeating the same mistake in the fight. 
end quote. To help you get that insight, record as many CVZs as possible and ask your Zurg to record as many as possible too. Watch it together after the CVZ and have a two-way feedback loop. Next chapter, clear calls. I don't think I can stress enough how vitally important clear calls are. If you say something, it's better to say it slowly and clearly than unclear and rushed. Sorry not sorry at dominant. To be honest, calling fast isn't inherently bad, it's just harder for newer players to join in. With clear calls, I mean a lot. Try to articulate as much as possible. For the non-native English speakers reading this, articulating is using your mouth movements as much as possible to make the words you say clear. For example, hello. If you don't speak English well, practice so that your basic instructions are clear. Accent hasn't much to do with articulating, so don't feel like you're doomed. The most important thing is your canton. You need a canton. Quote from Domnet. Calling is a universal language. Almost everyone understands basic canton and the word engage and cardinal directions. North, south, west, east. End quote. Don't be vague. If you say, engage now, 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 your zerg will be all over the place, time-wise and place-wise. Try to use as much heads up as possible. We're looking for an engage east, posture east, get ready, engage in three, on the stairs east, two, one, just front, just head to front, defenses. Okay, come back now, we're, we're walking west, we're walking west. This random example is very hard to misunderstand. If you're around the Zurg or in the zone, it is very easy to determine what is expected and what you need to do to be able to do what is asked. Use your intonation and speed in your speech to your advantage. If you make a big contrast in your calls, it will be easier to notice a change in instructions. People in the Zurg can tunnel vision and that can delay the response by seconds. These seconds can be very important. During your calls, you can use your enthusiasm to show how big the clump is, or urgency in response to a good engage by your enemy. Don't try to use anger in your calls. Use your enthusiasm and urgency more. Urgency is a great tool to use in your voice, when you have to suddenly shift what your ZVZ is, uh, your Zurg is doing, such as going from an engage to a retreat very quickly. You need to add urgency to your voice so that your Zurg can respond to the quick change in orders. Remember, how you feel is how your Zurich feels. If you feel stress frustrated, so will they. Uh, just to illustrate what I mean with urgency, it's like um, raising your tone. Like, go east, go east. Like, I emphasize the instruction a bit. Next point, macro. I touched a bit on macro before and we'll go a little more in depth here. What do we do, uh, what do we define as macro? Macro is everything that is influenced or influences the actual ZVZ battle. This includes enemy, allies of enemies, territory, objectives, item power, logistics, both financial plus regearing, and so on and so forth. In most cases, people refer to macro as repositioning, baiting while repositioning, being more patient, and winning through the patience. Allies and allies of the enemy, territory, cluster queue manipulation, and objectives. To work with cluster queues, you adjust the variables to produce the desired outcome. These kind of things you will fail at the start and will fail many times. I suggest only getting into leading cluster queue stuff if you're good at the basics. To manipulate these in your favor is really hard and the best way to learn is to make mistakes or have a shortcut coach while you call. Backstage shot calling in TeamSpeak, for example. That's about it for macro. Experience is the major influence of good macro. Insights help you, but experience is better than insight. Prime example is Blue Army before they disbanded. They were king together with PoE at manipulating the cluster queue in their favor. Next point, shot caller builds. Before diving into this, builds are entirely preference. Many shot callers run the following build. It's the classic Soul Scythe build with a clerical. The mounts could be pretty much anything, uh, in most cases it's a swift claw, but sometimes they run a little more Gucci. Quote from Domnet. Another variant would be Guardian Armor with this, allowing you to go deep and mitigate a lot of enemy DPS when pushing. End quote. The Cleric Call is a common item that can be found in all variants of the Shotcutter build. As a Shotcutter you are allowed to be selfish in the sense that you should ensure your survival. However, you should be selfless and not loot or focus on your survival. 
See yourself as the Zerg, if your Zerg dies, you die. I personally prefer the stun run ability on the W, since it gives me a little extra mobility. The cape that goes with this is the Martlock cape. Some people prefer Avalon and Poor Combat, but that's personal preference. Note, if you are having a 30 seconds E cooldown with omelette, keep in mind that many DPS in your Zerg do not have an omelette. So if you have E, count another 2 seconds to take that into account. Variants of the Shotgun Bolt is for example this. Um, this is very popular for uh, in Dominant or in Surf um, Sphere. I think this build is very solid, but I don't like it personally because it's more punishing than the Soul Scythe build. The W on the Grove Keeper should be the dash, but in smaller groups I feel free to use the Green. Uh, these are another two variants, uh, the Occult build and the uh, Locus. These are less common variants, however I think the Occult in specific is very strong because of how easy you can show your Zerg where to go. It is also more symbolic since the Occult is kind of the banner carrier, like morale support, which the Shotcut is as well. Quote from Mamono. Occult is only good if you have reliable tanks to get stuns. If you do, then you can just say, on the carpet, straight west, for example. It's like a big arrow on the ground. End quote. The cannon build has some scene, some light, but it's not that popular. The main reason is that it limits your mobility severely, and you need to think more about how you play the weapon. All the other weapons are easy mechanically and technically than this one. I personally don't suggest the cannon shotgun build, but don't feel bad trying it out. I'm going to use this section quickly to discuss the command mammoth as well. I would only try the command mammoth if you have enough money to buy at least 3, and if you have a zerg of at least 80 to 100 people. The pros and cons of the command mammoth are as follows. Intimidation. You see more. You can run through the enemy without much effort. Buffs go brr. Expensive. Easily countered by a Siege Ballista, and you don't have the same cooldown as your Zerg. Quote from Domnet. Calling on battle mounts is risky. Do it only when you have nearby Terries or hideouts you can kite to. End quote. Next section is how to grow. Practice. That's... I, I kind of wanted to end it there, but kind of need to elaborate. Shot calling is a skill like others that requires practice to master it. It's the highest skill ceiling skill in the entirety of Albion. I don't believe anyone has hit the ceiling yet. Quote from Domnet. There are very few callers in this game. For reference, let's say that there are 50 proper ZVZ guilds in this game. Each guild will have at least 2 callers on average. So there are only about 100 callers, and of which only maybe 15 or 20 are veterans with seasons of experience. End quote. Apart from that, get feedback from your Zerg and try to record as much as possible. An easy guide to record can easily be found on YouTube. OBS Studio is an easy to use software that can run on low end PCs. I recorded ZVZs with 8 gigs of RAM and 2 gigs of VRAM, which is under the average of a gaming PC. Use the recordings to spot Zerg and shotgun mistakes. Try to analyze your calls from their POV to see if their actions are reasonable. Ask other shotguns for feedback. Ask CVZ vets for feedback. Quickly want to dive here that you can always send me your VODs. Uh, preferably post them in my Discord and then uh, I'll uh, review them when I find the time. Uh, let's review. I linked this video in the ZVZ guide, but I want you to watch it again in case you've watched it already. This time, watch it fully, but pay attention to what Momono calls, how he calls it and how often he calls it. I want you to really pay attention to how enthusiastic he is and how he uses that to draw attention to what he wants. The video is in the description. I suggest fully watching it and really pay attention to it. Well, that's uh, the end again. Uh, I hope this was insightful. If you have any questions or remarks, feel free to reach out to me, WarriorGrip hashtag 1263 on Discord, or leave a comment here. I check them every once in a while and feel free to use any part from this video or as long as you give me credit. Special thanks to Domnet, Syndic and Momono for reviewing and giving feedback. See you another time.